What's going on, everyone? Blender here with another video on Ashes of Creation. So um, they just did a live stream today. I gathered all the uh, what I thought, you know, was the important information. And uh, yeah, we got a great video, some great information. And today we're going to be covering combat. So um, if you didn't, if you want to know, you know, the type of combat that's going to be in the game and uh, a lot of the, you know, finer details, um, you know, some of the abilities and, and how to dodge and, and the movement and mobility aspects, check out my other Ashes of Creation combat video. It will be at the end of this video. You can check on it or click on it and check it out. Um, really great stuff in there. But today we are doing a... Um, not a deep dive, but a look at the updated combat as of today, which is June 30th. So again, they did a live stream today. They covered a lot of great information and we got to see a glimpse of what they've, you know, updated with the combat and a uh, new look at the combat that they've got so far. And I'll tell you what, um, and I've said this before and I'm going to say it again and, and you guys are going to get sick of me or sick of hearing me say this, but I don't care. <laughs> so... Um, just to give you guys an idea, just to put it into um, some perspective for you, the this game is going to have just unprecedented quality and detail. It really is. And you can get a glimpse of that detail, quality, and just pure genius if you check out the weather and seasons video that I made and also a video on the different types of mounts that they're going to have. And you guys, if you, if you watch those videos, you're going to take a look and be able to see exactly what I'm talking about when I say genius and just sheer amazingness <laughs> and detail. It, it really is something to behold. It is, it is truly astonishing. And my point is that these aspects of the game, as great as they are, that's going to also translate to the combat. Everything about this game, they are just pouring everything they have and they have some amazing amazing um employees and, and game designers that they're working with and it's it's just going to be great and i can't wait to show you guys so without further ado we're going to get right into it and take a look at the combat as of june 30th 2022 a look at the alpha 2 gameplay and combat so here we go So just really quick, uh, this is something that Steve Sharif, and Steve, if you're watching, so sorry about mispronouncing your name before, I just assumed it was Sheriff, but I still want to use the Sheriff as your nickname, and if you have, if you do watch these videos and uh, you don't like that, we'll find a different nickname for you, but I'm going to call you the Sheriff, even though it's actually Sharif. <laughs> so anyway, Steve, the Sheriff wanted to let the content creators know that this is just a focus on basic melee weapon attacks and some of the floating damage techs and numbers. And you know, there's gonna be, this is just one tiny component, tiny component on the combat. This is not gonna be the final representation. And even if this was a video that showed all different aspects of combat, like range and different abilities and tab targeting, it still would not be it, you know um, the, the final product there's still lots of work to be done the main purpose of this live stream that he did today was to show us you know what where we are with the combat um, kind of a, a look at the alpha 2 combat because as you all know we've been waiting and waiting to see some combat and there's been so many comments on you know my videos where people say you know the game looks great but we just don't know what the current combat looks like and until i see some good combat i'm not sold well i'll tell you what guys you're going to be sold today because it looks great so once again this is not all the combat and he did specifically state that there will be more videos coming out with different aspects he didn't he was going to do like a main big video on everything combat as of today but he decided to kind of break it down and give us you know little pieces here and there and you know I think that's a great idea because it, it gives us it calms our nerves a little bit we get to kind of see the direction they're going and what they've got so far and, and it's great it's amazing it really is so just wanted to get that out of the way I also want to mention that in this video you're going to see some melee combat you know some melee basic attacks and uh, you're going to see you know ability or two some dashes but what you're not going to see is tab target and during the live stream there was a lot of comments i was trying to keep up with the chat but a lot of people are asking like where's the tab targeting is this game going to be um action oriented only where there's no tab target no lock on skills so to speak and the answer to that is it's coming it's coming 
I don't think he's changed that direction. I think he still wants to have some of that classic, you know, tried and true um, and, and successful tab targeting mixed with action combat. So this is going to be a showcase of mainly action or pretty much all action. And it's, it looks so good. It looks and sounds so great. So let's check, let's check it out. And another thing that I thought was uh, worth mentioning and I think is great is, and this kind of ties into what I said before about the, uh, the level of quality and the, the standards that they have when choosing employees and, you know, game designers and programmers and all that stuff. Um, when they're picking people, you know, because they are looking for more folks, he's hiring more people. They are really getting a lot of people on board and, and trying to make this game the best it can be. And it shows. It shows in the combat. It shows in, in every video that I've seen so far. So when they, when they interview and when they pick these guys and girls uh, to be on the team, the Intrepid team, uh, they actually spe very specifically ask one very important question. And that question is, what sort of MMOs do you like to play? And they have, between them, have thousands and thousands of hours of gaming in MMOs and RPGs. So, you know, I'm not gonna mention any names, <clears throat> No, you know what? I'm not going to do it, <laughs> but there have been some recent games that have been published and, uh, you know, and released that have or made it seem like they have this great team and, and they kind of do, but they just they didn't hire for some reason, some reason, which is beyond me. They just didn't hire um, people with this in mind. They, you know, maybe some of them have played games before. I'm sure they have. But, you know, the, the big difference here is that these guys and Steve, he wants a team of people that love, just like he does, love and are passionate about MMOs. And the guys that are doing the combat, um, he mentioned some names. And a couple of those guys are Keenan and Adam and Trad Thompson. Trad Thompson's the senior game designer. And he stated, you know, between, between all these guys, they've got thousands of hours of experience. So I think that is just absolutely great. And I think, again, this is something that you're going to be able to see when you are watching this video. So they actually have pro PVP and PVE gamers on their staff. Now, another cool thing that Steve brought up and, you know, I agree. Uh, and one of the first things that you're going to notice is Steve doesn't like this about other MMOs. And that's that, you know, when you're out there in the world, um, you know, and, and you're out there in the forest or whatever biome you're in, the land is just littered with all types of mobs. You know, they're everywhere. You can see what's up ahead. You can see what you're going to be getting yourself into, but not in this game. And that's cool. You know, in this game, you don't actually know where the danger lies. Um, you know, and it kind of reminds me of some of those older uh, Final Fantasy games, like Final Fantasy VII, or I don't know if you ever played Quest on uh, the Nintendo 64, one of my favorite, super basic and old game. But these these two games, you know, they, they kind of had that where, you know, you're, you're walking out uh, in, in the land and, and you might see like a mob here or maybe a creature there, but all of a sudden out of nowhere, you're, you're put into this combat, you know, situation or scenario and it's instance, but you know, you could just be walking around and not even see anything. And then all of a sudden, boom, out of nowhere, you're in this battle either against like a big giant boss or you know a group of mobs and it's really like it's exciting you know you in in most games nowadays you know you just walk out and you can see all the different mobs there's no surprise there's no hidden elements you know but this game is different so as you'll see here you know you don't see any mobs and you might see some creatures walking around just like i was saying before but you don't see the danger you don't know where the danger is you know but once you get close enough to something and trigger an event or or trigger an aggro suddenly these rocks transform and uh become these like rock golems it kind of reminds me like right here this reminds me of arc now arc is probably i you're probably gonna laugh at me for saying this but arc is my favorite game of all time i don't play it anymore it is toxic it, it gets me so mad when you wake up and your dinosaurs are just gone and your your base is destroyed uh, all that hard work so I, I I can't play it I just can't do it but in the beginning oh my god this game was everything to me me and my son Gavin we played this game so much and uh, it reminds me of that where you know there was um, certain maps or biomes where you'd go and and you would see this big rock formation 
either up in the volcanoes or just up in a mountain somewhere and you get too close and suddenly this rock just starts rumbling and then transforms into this giant rock golem boss you're like what the heck it was awesome and this game it, it reminds me of that just just right here and it is just so cool i absolutely love it so the other thing that they're talking about is weight they really 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 want to have this game and these weapons feel different sound different they want the uh the the attacks to be impactful now i know what that means and just watching this video you know it, to really get a, a feel for it you'd have to play it yourself but watching this video it does look like you know these attacks do have you know some some impact some impactfulness so when you are when you're hitting these creatures with a big two-handed sword it feels and looks like a big heavy weapon is that color going off differently or am i just do i not have my uh... Oh. Right there with, you know, their um, hypotheses on. But the other side of that was also just, you know, um, coming up with these. Now, in, in this iteration, it, it does kind of look like it, the attacks are pretty fast for a great sword. And I don't know if they're going to keep that. Remember, all of this can change. Absolutely. But from what I've seen, you know, the way he's moving so quickly and swinging that sword, um, it does seem a little bit fast for a great sword. Not going to lie. Now, when you look at the daggers, the daggers are way faster, so that, that does look really good. But there's going to be light attacks, there's going to be heavy attacks, and you can see that here. And it, it does look like these um, these heavy attacks do have you know some weight and some, some more impact to them, especially with this ability that he keeps using. And I wish there were more abilities that he could show us, but you know this is just the melee combat with uh, one or two weapons in particular, so we're not going to see too much. Uh, unfortunately but we do get to see the movement we do get to um, hear the sounds and, and see what it looks like and what it's gonna maybe feel like too and, and it looks great but as as far as weight goes they're they're really trying to make those weapons feel heavy and make those light weapons feel light and one of the things that they are doing and that he mentioned are the daggers and how the light weapons are supposed to be very fast and you know much lighter and, and feel lighter to them you know so daggers never are they're never really going to slow down your character you know as you're winding up attacks there really is no wind up to them they're just quick fast attacks but you know as opposed to the great sword the great sword and it's kind of hard to see here again we're probably gonna have to play with the different weapons to really see the difference but he said that the sword will sort of slow your your character down as you're winding up an attack and it will slow your movement down like let's say there's a scale from one to zero one being fast zero being you know dead stop it's gonna like as you're winding up a heavy attack your movement your player movement's gonna slow down to zero and then once the attack is you know ending the the animation uh and, and you're finishing up that heavy attack your speed is gonna slowly go back up to one, so to speak. So I think that's pretty cool, and, and I really like the idea that these weapons are gonna feel heavy and feel light, you know, according to what you're using. You know, when you're using a giant greatsword, you should be dragging it on the ground and, and having, you know, big, fast, or big, you know, long, slow attacks, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But I absolutely just love how, you know, when he's attacking these mobs, you know, the mobs aren't just, you know, in, in a lot of other games, most, I'm, geez, damn near every MMO RPG that I've played, you know, when you kill a mob, it either just falls to the ground and disappears after some time, or maybe blows up and explodes. You know, there's, there's several different things that can happen, but with this game, the mobs actually are pieces that are put together. The way they described it as like uh, like little different clay pieces, you know, that are kind of tied together. And then as they die or as you defeat the enemies, those pieces are going to break up and, and fall. You know, like you can see here when he's hitting these big golems, you know, pieces just go flying. I, I love that. It is so cool. And, you know, just imagine, you know, fighting this big golem and it just kind of topples over. But no, with this, they actually, these pieces go flying or they start falling apart and, and breaking off one by one. It's, it's really, really neat. And I really like it. Now, another really thing that you're going to notice is there's quite a bit of detail um, on 
you know, the attacks and, and when there's collision with the weapons, you know, hitting the ground, check it out, you know. Uh, where the sword drags on the ground, leaves these like cracks in the ground, or when he uses that ability with the hammer, you know, like a hammer, big hammer comes down and it's like a, a frontal cone thing and it slams down on the ground. It creates like a like a crater. Like you, you kind of see that in um, the Lost Ark combat is really, really good. Great combat on that game. And, um, you know, maybe even some, uh, you know, some, some new world combat. I think they have some stuff like that where when the weapon impacts the ground, you know, it leaves behind, uh, I guess they call it decals, but same with this game. So when you're doing different attacks, it's actually going to, you know, you can see those ground decals, how, how they appear, you know, whenever the, the tip of the sword or the blade, you know, makes contact with the ground. I think that's great. You know, like I said before, all these details, these small details, they really add up and, I, and, and make, you know, something amazing. And, uh, you know, it's no different here. Now, this next thing that was actually pretty funny, the way the, uh, the one of the designers was explaining it. I don't know if it was Stad. I don't know if it was um, uh, one of the other two guys, but they they were mentioning, you know, when they were talking to the, the visual team, you know, the visual effects and animations team, they said that, you know, weapon combos and their animations are going to be based on direction. I mean, this is how much detail they're going into. So they actually told the animation team, so you know those three hit um, you know, weapon combo animations? Well, we want different animations for each direction. And we also want to be able to weave between directions at any time. And they did an amazing job here. So as you could see Steve playing, you know, there's going to be different animations depending on which direction you're facing. So it doesn't, you know, just because you do this three hit combo, it's not going to look the same every time. You know, whether you're going forward and making these attacks or right or left or backwards, you know, your player's animations and the way he steps is all going to change. So really, really great detail there. And this is probably the best thing about the combat that I like so far with the melee, but they're trying to really focus on real-time movement so as far as attacks and movement go you know like as opposed to having a cue system like in some other games that we play mm -hmm. so in the middle of a swing you know when you're moving left if you want to change your mind and you want to move right um, you won't be locked into a certain direction you know you won't have to wait until that animation finishes uh, you'll have the choice immediately to move the other way and even though you know you're mashing that back button or uh, an ability hotkey it's not going to cue those abilities and just start you know um, playing them out as the cue goes. These abilities and movements are instead, you know, they're gonna register whatever you're doing at that time as close to real time as it can get. So that's gonna be really cool. It's gonna open windows for animation cancels, not just, you know, doing a different ability in the middle of an ability. I mean, actual like animation cancels. They want you to have full control over that at real time. And that's awesome. Now let's talk about the camera. This camera, can the camera controls here look amazing. And we're finally going to be able to zoom in or zoom out damn near, you know, as far as we want. But he said there's going to be a pretty far uh, or pretty big, you know, range of, of cameras, you know, zoom in and zoom out. So I really like that. You know, if you're fighting a big creature, you're not going to be like inside the mob as far as the camera goes and, and be all wonky and awkward. You're going to actually be able to zoom out quite a bit. And uh, hopefully, you know, maybe not quite a helicopter view, but we're going to have a lot of room to play with the camera. And that brings me to the UI. So we don't really see any UI, so to speak. You know, he pretty much looks like he has it turned off most of the time. And, and I like that, you know, and hopefully, you know, now that I think about it, we have, hopefully we have the ability to shut off the UI, you know, for screenshots and stuff. And guys, guys, Intrepid, if you're listening, give us a, um, a, a photo mode. Oh my God, give us a, you know, if you guys spend so much detail on all these other things, you know, I, I could just imagine what kind of screenshot maker or wallpaper maker that you guys can implement in the game where we can change the field of view and, and what's focused and what's not, maybe change the lighting around, you know, give us something like that. It would be amazing. Now, we do not need this. This is not a requirement, but it would be hella cool if we can get something like that. But uh, yeah, as far as the UI, we really don't get to see a, a good look at the UI, but we do get to see something that's really important when it comes to combat, and that is the floating text. So, um, one of the things that I noticed and that he, he pointed out is your damage. The damage that you do, that text kind of floats toward the, um, the left side of your character or, you know, just 
in general as you're damaging the enemy it's actually a different color which is normal it's yellow and it kind of floats to the right and the damage that you take is red and it kind of floats to the left so it's just going to be a lot easier to differentiate between you know the damage you're doing and the damage you're taking um, because sometimes you know it's just a cluster well you know what i'm not going to curse on camera but yeah yeah it's going to be nice it's going to all this kind of ties in and really helps you know differentiate you know the different damage types and what you're doing what you're taking etc and the really cool thing about this is that you are actually gonna he's gonna give us customizable options for the floating combat text now we've seen this in games like wow and we've also not seen this in other games and every game needs to have something like this so we're really going to be able to get in there and change some of the settings so some of them are going to be like you're going to be able to change the color yourself based on you know different damage types and stuff like that you're going to be able to change the size of the text you can actually uh, use and and you like damage icons different icons for like different abilities if you want to see those pop up on screen and you can make the text either bold for certain kinds of things or not bold for other types of damages uh, and as you can see here you know the crits really stand out so that's really nice and uh, you know it looks really clean it looks clean it looks solid and and i love being able to really customize that kind of stuff so before we wrap this up just want to hit a couple side notes really quick a um, couple things that i think are really nice and number one is this whole process i mean from day one to now and and i imagine going forward as well is a hundred percent transparency he has nothing to hide and when we want to see something he delivers this this dev discussion or this live stream today was not originally going to be anything about combat like i said before he was gonna um this was going to be a completely different topic and he was going to wait until he had a bunch of combat stuff to give us in one big package but he knew that we wanted it as a community and we wanted to see where's the combat at right now all we have is old ass alpha one foot not old ass but you know old alpha one footage we want to see where we're at now because we we got to know about combat and he stopped he stopped what he was going to do. He listened to the community and gave us a little bit of the combat. And boy, am I glad he did. And, you know, the community just received it really well. You guys should have seen some of the comments going. It was great. And, you know, if they're doing that at this part of the stage, at this stage of the game, rather, um, it's just I think it's going to main they're going to maintain this, you know, throughout the 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 game experience you know from development to to release and i just love the transparency every single developer needs to do this so these guys are really setting the standards not only in detail and stuff and and you know um visuals and, and sound and and systems but also at a development you know standpoint and and process i think that is really really great and it's gonna it really speaks volumes of their team as a whole and steve's you know business practices and stuff i think it's great so that's awesome um remember they want more feedback and trust me these guys steve intrepid everybody they are taking our feedback to heart like you wouldn't believe and and they're applying it so if you guys want to see some changes or you want to see something cool added to the game don't be afraid to get on there go to the youtube um, channel they have their own youtube channel so check out the videos leave comments um, go to the forums leave feedback and let them know what you guys want to see because they have no problem listening to their community and so far it's going great and just a couple other things um no weapon or equipment specific skill sets so he doesn't want you know certain weapons to to have certain skills i guess um i'm not really too sure what they meant by that but i'm pretty i'm, I'm thinking that you know if you have the great axe you're, you're going to only be limited to these skills it's not going to be like that you're going to have skills based on your archetype and you know what you want to spec into but you're not going to be limited to you know what you can do based on just the weapon so there's going to be um some you know there could be some like weird weapon slash uh, archetypes that uh that you can try out and play he's going to give us a lot of freedom so if you want to be a, a a bow tank you're going to be able to do it <laughs> so far so far we'll see how that plays out but i think that's great you know that that we're really going to be able to customize and do what we want as opposed to you know a healer only being able to wear light gear and having to use this life staff and and you know um, I mean, obviously that kind of makes sense, but yeah, we're going to have freedom. We're going to have freedom to really mix it up and create these classes ourselves. And I think that is really, really cool. 
So just wanted to say those uh, few things. And this is not related to the uh, combat system, so to speak, but it is just something that he mentioned that I think is really awesome. This came up as one of the questions, you know, from us, the viewers and the community. And one of the questions was, what's crafted gear going to be like compared to um you know other gear in the game from like raids or maybe on the market or from quest rewards and this made me so happy and i'm gonna leave this video with with this comment so what he said is crafted gear will be the best gear in the game crafters are gonna make he said crafters are gonna make the best shit is what he said and um, it, the reason for that is because the effort to make these crafted items will be monumental and it's going to be great crafted gear. I cannot wait to see this game. Guys, hype this game up. This game is going to be amazing. I just know it. I think <laughs> and I hope. So that's all I've got for you guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope this answered some questions as far as where is the combat heading? What does it look like now? And boy, does it look good. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. Please let me know. Light up this comment section. I want to hear you guys. I want to hear what you think. Even those of you that just watch and, and play New World and just watch my New World videos. Um, I'm not giving up on New World. Love it. But we're talking about AOC right now. And I want to hear what you guys think about what you're seeing so far in this channel as far as AOC goes. So let's freaking go. Gavin, Lily, Mina. Jack, I love you guys. Daddy loves you. And I'll see you very soon. Bye, guys. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.